Let's talk about some camera settings and techniques that can make your footage look more cinematic. Hey everyone, Camber here, and welcome back to episode four of the behind the scenes look into my short film, Coming Home. In this episode, we're gonna be covering camera settings and equipment used during the scenes in the hotel, in the airplane, as well as a scene that we decided to add on over a year after we started this project. And if you haven't seen the film yet, go over to my other page, Camber Films, check out the video coming home, and then come back here and watch the behind the scenes. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe so you can learn more about how to use your camera for video. And with that, let's get into the first scene. And for all the shots covered today, I was using the a7 III with picture profile 8 and gamma on Cine 4, the Sony 24-70 G Master lens, and the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and all shots were at 24 frames per second unless stated otherwise. I use wide autofocus with face detection on because trying to set focus on myself in a mirror with no monitor was a bit difficult. You can see the shutter speed at 1 50th, aperture at f5.6, and ISO of 500. The exposure meter shows underexposed because I had it set to multimetering where it's basing the exposure on the entire frame and you can see the very dark area in the doorway causing that. However, I exposed for my skin from some test shots based on me being in the frame. I had the white balance set to 4500 Kelvin and I also had the marker display on at 2.35 to 1 so I could frame the shots based on cropping in to a 21 by 9 aspect ratio and editing. I used the Manfrotto B-Free video tripod in all the shots. The lens was set to about 40 millimeters, and I pulled the white shower curtain forward to help bounce some light onto my face. I framed myself in the upper left third and also had a lamp on next to the bed to help add some depth behind me instead of just having a flat black background. For this next shot, I used 35 millimeters on the lens and my small aperture LED light to bounce light off the wall. The only change in the camera settings were now an aperture of f2.8 and ISO of 1000. And I used manual focus with the red focus peaking on so that I could set the focus on the uniform which was set in the right third of the frame. For the next shot I turned the light directly down so it would light the boots better and I used all the same camera settings with the lens still on 35mm. I framed the boots in the bottom left third and set manual focus on them in that spot before starting the scene so that the autofocus wouldn't try to pick me up as I walked off in the right third. Here the peaking shows that we're manually focused on the clock with white balance now on 3500 Kelvin and ISO on 2000. I just used the bathroom and closet light from across the room so that I wouldn't have a harsh light shining down from the lamp. And the lens was at 50 millimeters. Our main point of focus was framed in the bottom right third as I removed the items from the left third. For this shot, I had the same aperture light set up in the closet from before with the lens set at 24 millimeters. White balance was 4000, ISO now at 1250, and I used autofocus. And again, I turned the lamp on to add some depth and color to the shot. Now this is the first shot I did of walking out, and you can see that it is absolutely terrible. When I first played it back, I was like, what? So let's see what makes this shot so bad. First off, I'm shooting into a corner, so there's absolutely no depth, and everything is very flatly lit. There's that electrical box behind me, and the angle is just bad. So I placed the camera on the other side, and it's still not a great shot, but it fixed a lot of the problems. Now we're shooting at an angle down a wall, so there's plenty of depth added. And since we're on the back side of everything that's being lit, there's now plenty of contrast throughout the shot as well, and this angle makes us feel like we're going out the door with the character, rather than just watching him walk by and leave. And here's the final sequence in the film. Moving on to the shots at the airplane, I had to plan the shots to match up with the shots at the house for the transitions. So I took screenshots of the transitions in each scene so that I could frame the shots here to match up with them. I only had one chance at getting this approach to landing, so I tested where I needed to be based on that screenshot with a few airplanes that landed before this one and then got ready for their approach. This shot was taken at about an hour before golden hour started and I used a polarizer filter and I believe the aperture was somewhere around f16 to compensate for the light. Earlier that morning I filmed most of the scenes inside and around the airplane. 
I first filmed my buddy in this shot so he could see how I wanted it to look. I was using the DJI Ronin S, the lens at 35mm, and a variable ND filter. I also shot this part at 60 frames per second and 1 125th on the shutter speed, so I could have the option to slow it down. After we went over the shot, we did a few takes to see how it looked. Then we moved up into the airplane with the same camera settings to get the shot of me walking out. After I showed him what I was looking for, we tried it out with me. With this first shot, the pitch mode was locked, so you can see I sort of walked below the frame as I was leaving. So we reframed it so that it would follow me as he angled the gimbal down, and it worked much better. I used my tripod for this shot later that afternoon, before I got the shots of the airplane landing. I was at 35mm initially with the variable ND filter and using autofocus, and you can see that it's way too close. So I switched to 24mm and it still ended up being too close. So I moved the tripod further back and then it worked a lot better. And here's that sequence. Look, he's coming in for a With the rest of the shots in the airplane, we used mostly natural light with some airplane lights. And I did the same thing with framing it on my friend with the screenshots to show him what I was looking for and then switching places so we could get the shots. You can see with this first take that it was way too bright on me because of the open door on the plane which wouldn't naturally let in that much light while flying because there's only a small viewing hole there. So I had my buddy stand there in the doorway and hold up my extra uniform next to him to block most of the light and it worked pretty well. And for this shot, I zoomed into 70 millimeters on the tripod and used autofocus. Once I got into position and grabbed the cup, I had my buddy use the touch focus on the screen to make it focus on my hand and stay there for the rest of the shot. And here's how that sequence turned out. These shots were pretty much the same with showing someone the framing. I used the overhead light that's in the airplane to light the calendar, and here I exposed for the sunrise so that I would be mostly a silhouette. And here's the original version of that sequence. But in the edit, it felt like it was missing something, so I decided to add this last scene to show the kids being sad when I initially left home. Alright, so we're here filming one of the last scenes. It's something I wanted to add after watching it, just an insert, kind of a throwback to leaving the family. And so we found this little area behind a house we're staying in out of town right now. It's kind of similar to what we were filming in for the house when I come home, so it pretty much works together. But what we're working with here is all slow motion shots. I'm doing 60 frames per second. And then instead of doing the normal double your frame rate, I want it to be more of a blurry look. So I'm going with the slower shutter speed to make it kind of look more dreamy, memory type feel. So we're experimenting doing uh, 60, 60 <laughs> on the shutter speed and also all the way as low as 30 because much below that it starts to get really choppy. Like, honey, it starts to get really choppy like uh, it's dropping frames or something. So that's what we're working with here. Got the, we're in the shade so I'm using about 55 to 6,000 on the white balance and uh, working with kids so we have incentives to try to help them focus like cookies and shows and ice cream. So. We'll see how it works out and uh, get back to the editing room. Before we started, I did some tests the day before to see how it could look in the film, and these were the initial shots. I liked how they worked, so we came back out at the same time the next day, and I planned the shots so that we started with the ones that used the most people, and then moved down to the ones with the fewest. And this was almost a year after the original shoot, so there's a huge difference in how the younger two look, so I placed the older of the two with her head facing away, and the little one just kind of moved around where she wanted. My son didn't look too much different, but my oldest daughter was missing her two top front teeth, so we had to make sure that that didn't show. And to help mask the age difference even more, I filmed at an aperture of f2.8 and had it manually focused on my daughter's face so that as I moved away, everyone got more blurry. 
and this also helped enhance the fact of me leaving and kind of drifting away. We needed a quick stop for some bug spray. Next up I did a quick take to show my wife how it needed to look. We watched it and then set up for her to film it, and it was a pretty easy shot overall. And with this final shot, I had my wife stand there so I could set the focus on my daughter's hand. Then we switched so she could see how I wanted it framed and make sure the focus stayed where our hands would be. We looked over the shots and that was a wrap for the filming. And here is that final sequence put into the final film. Can you just stay? Please don't go, Daddy. <laughs> I want my daddy. And that's a wrap for all the camera settings and equipment used throughout my short film, Coming Home. And in the next episode, we're going to dive into editing and cover everything from organizing and backing up your footage all the way to shaping your story in the edit. So stay tuned, and I'll see you soon.